In this video, we will dive into the powerful WHERE method, which allows us to filter data based on specific criteria. Let's get started. WHERE method is used to filter data from a collection based on specified conditions. It enables us to extract elements that satisfy a given predicate, and create a new sequence containing only those elements. This means, WHERE method doesn't modify the original sequence, but it returns a new sequence containing the filtered elements. Let's now check the different overloads of this method. WHERE method has two overloads. Let's start with the first one. I will read the input and output from this overload, as I showed you before in method structure video. As input we have a sequence, which we want to filter. This could be an array, a list, a data table, or any other data type that implements I enumerable or equiriable. The second input is a predicate of type function, which means that we have to use a lambda expression. As output we get a new sequence, which is of the same type as the input sequence and contains only the elements, that meet the condition of the lambda expression. The syntax of this overload will be as following. Here is the first input parameter, which is the sequence we want to filter. Inside the braces we have a lambda expression. Element variable represents the elements inside the sequence we want to filter. For example, suppose we have a collection of integer numbers called my numbers, and we want to retrieve the even numbers. We can use where method as follows. Here I added the collection I want to filter. Inside the braces I have a condition to return only the even numbers. As output I will get the following collection, which contains the following even numbers. This is how to use the first overload of where method. I showed you here an example of integer collection, but you can use this method for any data type you need, and in the same way. Let's now move on to the second overload. This overload has exact the same inputs and outputs like the first overload. We only have one input parameter more in this overload. It's of type integer and it represents the index of the elements. This should be used with the predicate. The syntax of this overload will be as following. As you see, I added a new parameter for the lambda expression. So, here the first parameter represents the elements inside the sequence we want to filter. And the second parameter represents the index of the elements inside the sequence. The index is zero based, which means that the first element has the index zero, the second element has the index one, and so on. Let's take the same example of the integer collection. Assume I want to get only the numbers, where the number plus its index is smaller than 5. For that I can use the following query. As output I will get the following collection. Let's check the numbers one by one. The first number is 1 and its index is 0. 1 plus 0 is equal to 1, which is smaller than 5. So, the condition for this number is true, therefore we get this number as output. The second number is 2 and its index is 1. 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, which is also smaller than 5. So, we take this number also as output. The next number is 3 and its index is 2. The sum of the number and its index is equal to 5. So, it's not smaller than 5, therefore we don't get this number as output. If we also check the next numbers, we will get a result greater than 5, therefore we will not get these numbers as output. This means, the output of this query will be only these two numbers, 1 and 2. This is how to use the second overload of WHERE method. In this example I used both variables to check the sum of the number and its index, but we can use both variables in other ways, depending on what we need to do. These are the overloads of WHERE method. As mentioned, both overloads can be used exact in the same way for each data type you may have. So, once you want to use WHERE method, keep in mind these two overloads. I am using the parameter names, element and index, but you can use any name you want for both parameters. But always try to use a meaningful name for the parameters, depending on the data you have. Let's now check the following real example using WHERE method. Suppose you have a list of temperatures recorded at different times throughout a day, and you want to retrieve the temperatures that are higher than the previous temperature in the list. In this case, I should get the following three values as output, because each one of them is greater than the previous one. And because we want to check the different values inside the list with their previous values, we have to use the index of the values. In other words, we have to use the second overload of where method, because we want to use the index of the different items. The query to achieve this will be as following. The condition here consists of two parts. The first one is to check, 
if the index greater than 0. So, here I don't want to check the first element in the sequence, because there is no element before it. The second part is to compare the current element with the previous one. Here I use the list variable with the index variable minus 1, to get the previous element of the current one. In this way I will check each element with its previous element. Once the both parts of the condition are true, the element will be selected as output. Let's check the elements one by one. Here is the first element and the index is zero. The condition here is false, because the index is not greater than zero. So, we don't get this element as output. The second element has the index one. So, the first part of the condition is true. Now we check the second part of the condition. Element variable represents this value. This statement here returns the following value, which is the previous element. So, the current element is greater than the previous element, therefore we take this element as output. Then we move on to the next element in the sequence, and compare it with the previous element. At the end we get these three elements, which meet the condition of where method. That's all you have to know about where method for now. In the next videos I will use this method with other methods. So, you will learn more about it later using different examples.